Okay, the next feature I'd like to discuss is smooth scrolling from one part of a page to another based on clicking a button. And so let's take a look at what I mean by that. Um, the new feature list is a great example of this. So uh, we've got this long page on our website that has a bunch of new features uh, of SiteGrinder 3.5 and they all appear on the page. But uh, what we'd like to do is have a nice elegant way of getting from this menu of new features to the feature that we're interested in. So we see, oh look, Google Font Support. Well, I click on that, and I don't know how this is going to look over the webinar, but on my computer, there's a nice, lovely, smooth scroll from the top down to Google Font Support. And uh, another example of this is that, um, this is a little more fanciful, uh, brought to you by Eric Hussman um, and so what he's done is created a very wide page in Photoshop and this is a sample that you can download and build yourself to see how it works um, basically he's got a button here and when I click it notice that the balloon is fixed in place the rest of the page content scrolls behind it and then we can scroll back to the beginning so how does this work? Um, it turns out to be pretty darn simple in SiteGrinder. Uh, basically, you uh, create, let me find this document so I can show you exactly how it works. Here it is. So I'll zoom way out here so you can see what's, whoops, so you can see what's going on. So notice we've got this uh, very short, very wide page, and it has uh, three buttons on it. It's got a button here, a button here, and a button way over here. And uh, those buttons work as scrollers to scroll to a different area of the page simply because they are named after something else on the page. And so it's literally as simple as that. If you have an image layer or a type layer or something like that that is named, you know, let's call it target-text or something, and you have a button called target-button, then when target-button is clicked on, the browser will, will scroll as far as it needs to to reveal target-text. So uh, that is... Um, I mean, there's really not that much else to say about it other than that. Uh, that's how it works. Now, the downside of that is that if your browser is open quite wide, so let's go back to this uh, scroller here. So I'm, I'm at the beginning, and if I open it so wide, I'm not sure if I can do it with this document, but let's see. No, that worked. But if, if I opened it so wide that no scrolling had to occur to reveal the entirety of the target, then no scrolling would occur. So uh, that's uh, the only the only caveat there. Um, the other thing is uh, that you should know about this feature is that it does scroll until the uh, left-hand side of the element that you're scrolling to is at the left-hand side uh, of the browser window. So if you want to have a little padding there, you could put the target inside a column, for example, and scroll to the column rather than scrolling to the thing itself. And that way you could set it you know, inside a column with 50 pixels on the left and 50 pixels at the top so that it wouldn't be jammed up against the, uh, the top of the browser window. Notice that these type layers, for example, are centered. And so they've actually got a little bit of margin. And that's why, that's why, for example, this one has a little bit of space between the S and the side of the browser window. I want to briefly discuss the, this, this uh, HTML5 CSS3 animated gallery. Uh, this is a, a, a basically the animated CSS gallery from before in that it's all done using CSS. There's no flash. But uh, it's now done using CSS3 and uh, HTML5. So what that means is that browsers that support these extensions to uh, visual effects will use any available graphics processing unit that your computer or iPad or iPhone uh, happens to have to make these effects extremely smooth. Uh, and right now there are only two effects supported. There's card flip and there's crossfade. Both of them use these CSS3 effects uh, in browsers that support them. For browsers that are older than that, uh, it uses the same uh, 
crossfading effect that doesn't use the smooth CSS3 transitions. Um, and those wouldn't have uh, the, the hardware acceleration anyway, so you don't really lose anything in those older browsers than, than you would have had anyway. So, so what you'll get is that you'll still get a nice crossfade in older browsers, no matter, even if you choose card flip, uh, SiteGrinder will just correct you and say, okay, well, this browser is too old to use card flip, so we're going to use this older um, crossfade effect. If you choose crossfade, then SiteGrinder will say, okay, is this a, a, a recent enough browser? It is, okay, then I'm going to use the new souped up crossfade, but if it isn't, I'll use the old school crossfade. Um, and we'll be adding more cool CSS3 effects to this uh, over time. Um, and uh, so just to give you an example of what the card flip looks like if you haven't play played with it yet, basically you just uh, change the transition style here. So we'll change this to card flip, hit apply. And now uh, one thing to keep in mind, uh, card flip does not support the same alignment settings that crossfade does. So card flip looks best if you uh, actually uh, use images that are pre-sized to the picture box. Um, and you can see what's going on here. I've created a big green box behind the picture box that's the same size as the picture box so you can see what's happening. It's actually, it's this looks sort of cool, but, but if you want it to um, align in the middle, uh, it the, the card flip effect uh, ignores the uh, the inset alignment um, right now. It always aligns to the left hand side. So if you want it to be centered, you really it needs to be the size uh, of the picture box. And the reason these are also varying is these are just of course the random shots that come with SiteGrinder for working in the design manager. So you can kind of see what what's a tall thing going to look like versus a wide thing. Um, so that's the cool card flip effect. I want to talk a little bit about the uploading system. I'm not going to go into great detail about this because we have two uh, pretty thorough videos about this system, but I just wanted to mention it. Um, basically, SiteGrinder 3.5 introduces uh, two things having to do with uploading. One is that in your connection settings window, there is now a web DAV or web dev panel. SiteGrinder 3.5 supports this, this uh, more modern, um, really better in almost every way file transfer method called uh, web DAV. And uh, so the web DAV is not supported by as many servers as support FTP, but if you have a server that supports PHP 4, SiteGrinder can actually upload the web DAV capability to your your host. So even if your host doesn't support web DAV, uh, SiteGrinder can essentially install it for you. And then uh, when you set up, uh, when you click this use web DAV button and you set up web DAV uh, using the settings here, um, then uh, when you upload using the upload menu, uh, it'll use web DAV. And uh, it's just uh, a much better, more secure, uh, and more reliable uh, way of uploading files. The other thing that SiteGrinder 3.5 has changed uh, is the way that synchronization happens. Um, the, the challenge of synchronization is uh, if you've deployed a site and you've uploaded it and you've got a client who's making edits and you make edits, uh, you can reach a situation that is essentially unresolvable. Um, for example, if you make an edit to uh, a text layer and uh, before you upload it, your client makes an edit to that same layer, um, the, 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 the problem there is that you've essentially got a colliding edits. You've got uh, one on your machine, you've got one on your server, you've made a change to one, your client's made a change to the other, and the management of that uh, became a very difficult problem for people. And so what SiteGrinder has done is simplified that and made it more reliable. So what you do with SiteGrinder 3.5 is you decide, rather than some automated system, whether you want to privilege the changes that are on the server that maybe the client made or whether you want to privilege the changes that you made on your local machine. And so the download and upload commands are much more explicit. Uh, upload everything is what it sounds like. It's, it, 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 it'll take the longest and it will upload basically your entire site again and everything that's on your machine will, will be on the server. Any changes that were on the server will disappear. Uh, upload changes privileges your changes that are on your local machine over any changes that have occurred on the server. Um, download remote edits does the opposite. It basically replaces 
changed things on your local machine with what they are on the remote server. Um, and then download and then and then upload changes basically does that in sequence. It downloads the remote changes and because there are more things that you can change in the local content manager than there are in the remote content manager, it will then upload any of those things if they exist. Um, and so that's that's a, a, a review of the new upload download system. Um, there is about uh, 20 or 30 minutes of video about both WebDAV and the new kind of uh, upload download system available at the SiteGrinder TV page, um, as well as linked to from that SiteGrinder 3.5 info page.